We all have emotional pain. That is part of being human. That is part of our experience. And it's not about not having pain, but how do we not attach to our pain? How do we let go of our pain? We can spend our entire lives trying to protect ourselves from the pain, not wanting to look at it, not wanting to get in there and release it. Sometimes it feels easier just to hold on to it. Who would we be without it? This episode is about learning how to let go of your pain. My name is Reverend Rachel Harrison, and this is the Recover Your Soul podcast, a spiritual path to a happy and healthy life. I started Recover Your Soul after having profound changes in my life from my recovery of alcoholism, control addiction, and codependency. I was guided to share the tools and principles of spirituality and soul recovery to help others transform their lives as mine was transformed. For us to overcome external circumstances, we must first turn the attention to ourselves, focusing on inner change. Positive results in our lives will follow. As a spiritual coach, I can support you on your path to make deep and real changes that will bring you a life of peace, happiness, connection, and abundance. Visit the website recoveryoursoul.net to book coaching sessions, read the blog, listen to some of my original music, and subscribe to receive email updates. I think of Recover Your Soul as a community. Follow us on social media, join the private Facebook group, and even our monthly soul recovery support group on Zoom to support each other and connect. For an extra episode each week and to support the podcast, become a Patreon member or subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Together, we can do the work that will recover your soul. Welcome back to Recover Your Soul. I'm Reverend Rachel Harrison, and I am so glad that you are choosing to spend your time with me here today. I'm honored that you are here for your soul recovery journey and that these podcasts are helping you to find inner peace by turning the attention to ourselves and our own inner healing, regardless of what's happening in the world around us, we can find peace. We can have a spiritual path that will give us a happy and healthy life. I know that's been the case for me, and I am just so grateful that you are here where I can share the experiences that I've had, the healing that I've had, the learning that I've experienced, so that it may offer you some hope. For this episode, I wanted to talk about pain And I wanted to talk specifically about why are we choosing to continue to hold on to our pain? I know I chose to continue to hold on to my pain for a very, very long time. And when I look back now and I think about those years and I think about the suffering that I felt, I'm curious as to what was it? that made it so hard for me to feel like I could let it go. And I've explored those concepts. I've asked myself those questions. And so I want to share some of that with you here today. Many of you know that I grew up Tibetan Buddhist, and not a lot of people have been able to say that. But I grew up a hippie child in New Mexico, Santa Fe, New Mexico. My parents were some of the early followers of Tibetan Buddhism. And so I picked up little things along the way. I didn't deeply study Buddhism, and I actually didn't know a lot about it besides how my mom was living and the love that I felt from it and the connection that I felt from it and the peace that it gave me because my mom was peaceful. And there was a lot of elements that I really resonated with that I heard, but I didn't do any deep studies, but I overheard things. One of the things that I overheard was the Buddhist tenet that life is suffering. And so when I look back on it now, I can see that I grabbed onto that wording as I was beginning to start to experience the pain and the complexity of being human, that in a way it helped me to feel like it was okay that I was in pain, but it also helped me stay in a place where I was resonating and attaching to the part that this is suffering. Life is suffering. It turns out that that line, life is suffering, life is pain, 
is part of the four noble truths. The first noble truth being that life is suffering. The second noble truth being that our suffering comes from our grasping, our desire, our wishing and wanting it to be different, to have more that what we have in our lives doesn't feel like enough and that creates our suffering. The third noble truth is that there is an answer, that there is a solution, that there is another way to be and to feel. And the fourth noble truth being that the path of Buddhism is a solution to that suffering. Now, growing up, I didn't know the other three tenets. I only knew the first tenet. And so when I started to experience pain, as we do, started to have hardship, started to be rejected, started to have heartache, started to experience times when I didn't fit in, started to have complexity of how I fit in even into my my small family, how to be loved and supported as a child of my parents who were doing the best that they could, but I had to learn how to accommodate all of these things that we, of course, go through in our childhood and in our our adolescent years that begin to formulate this aspect of who we consider ourselves to be. And pain is a big part of that. And then we start to develop ways of being that protect us from that pain, defense mechanisms, sometimes character defects, protectors that come and hold our heart, keep us from feeling that hurt again. There's a book called The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer that I studied in a book study at my spiritual center many years ago. And it was a really powerful book for me. And it really talked about learning how to be more of an observer of your life and noticing and witnessing. And we talk about that in soul recovery, taking a step back, turning the attention to ourselves having awareness of what's happening, having curiosity of what's happening around us, not getting too attached to the world around us, that we have our own control, our own thoughts, and our own ways of deciding how we can look at something. It is as I choose to see it. Another thing in that book that was really powerful for me was this story that he told about how pain is like a thorn and that we all have pain and that we all end up having situations in our lives where we step on thorns or have a thorn that goes, I always kind of vision it in my arm. You know, you're walking down this path and you walk your, your dog and your arm goes out and all of a sudden, you've got this thorn in your arm. And that instead of immediately going in and taking care of it, asking yourself what you need, noticing what's going on around you. How can I make sure to take care of this? How can I nurture this? How can I pull the thorn out and then tend this wound? What we do is in our pain, because we don't want to look at it, we do whatever it takes so that no one can touch it. We start putting up barriers. Oh, I don't want anyone to touch my thorn. I got this thorn over here, so I don't go walk my dog anymore because I don't want anything to happen to it. As a matter of fact, I don't leave my house anymore. I don't let anybody get close to me because I don't, I've got this really infected bad thorn. And if you think about it that way, it seems crazy, right? That why wouldn't you take care of it? Why wouldn't you touch it? Why wouldn't you allow it to be taken care of in that moment? Ask yourself what you need. Be tender to yourself. Manage your pain. But with our pain, we end up putting these huge protectors around ourselves. Interestingly enough, those protections and our pain begins to have power. And it can have power because it can be a definition of why our life is as it is. It can make it so that we're not taking responsibility for our own being that we can point the finger as I did and say, I'm unhappy because of this person and this person and that person. 
that if everything else was okay, then I could be at peace. That those people are my thorn. And that pain that I feel has a purpose of protection for myself. Because I don't want to look at myself. I don't actually, I didn't actually want to go in and take responsibility for my own happiness. I was still stuck in that first tenet of the Four Noble Truths, believing that life is suffering, that it's actually my job to suffer. And that if I could point the finger at the places where the suffering was from, then it gave me validity for this pain that I felt, for this upset that I had, for my grievances, for my resentments. Another is that we can get attention for being the victim, that there is something to be said about being in a situation where people feel sorry for you, where you feel like that's the only way that you can get the attention and the love that you want, that holding on to that pain gives you a definition of who you are and why you need help. Instead of taking the thorn out and allowing healthy relationships around you that aren't based on people feeling sorry for you, but are based on equal footing of compassion and love for each other. And that in those situations, oftentimes we have foundational beliefs about ourselves that tell us that we're not deserving that we're not safe, that we can't do it by ourselves, that we can't be trusted with our own feelings. And that's really what's underneath. That's really where that desire and want for other people to be there to fix it, to help us comes from, is from some of these foundational beliefs that were given to us as children. There's many more reasons why we hold on to our pain. And I couldn't possibly know all of them. I know the ones that I used. I know the ones that were the reason why I was holding on to my pain. And when I started this practice of soul recovery, when I quit drinking alcohol and I had gotten to a place in my life where I was sick and tired of being sick and tired, and the pain was so much that I was completely affected that I couldn't step out into the world. I was, I was insulating myself. I was defended. I didn't know how to communicate well with my husband. I was easily reactive in my job. And in my relationships with friends, I had great friends, but I didn't really know how to be present with them and just allow them to have their experience without thinking that it was my job to fix them or fix the situation or complain about it a whole bunch or point out and be in the suffering, in the grasping. So when I started this journey of what I now call soul recovery and I began to look at why am I holding on to the pain Part of it was because I was afraid that if I let that pain go, there'd be nothing left of me. That it had defined such a part of my life. Could I believe, could I trust that a power greater than myself could restore me to sanity? Could I believe that if I let go of all these places that I held on to memories of intense emotion that there'd be something else there for me on the other side. That I didn't know how else to be. And could I be open to realizing that without my thorns, it meant that I was vulnerable and exposed. And those were questions that took time to work through with myself. That we get attached to these definitions of ourselves. What if I quit saying that my husband was the reason for my suffering? Then what is my suffering? And when I opened up to the rest of the circle of healing, and you can use that circle of healing in a lot of different ways. You can use it as awareness and then moving into definition of what your patterns are, what your grievances are, what your pain is. 
and then down into self-compassion, right, which is the practice, and then into new ways of living, being mindful and aware of this new expression of self, picking up a new way of being, that I could start to release these definitions that I had of myself, and I could quit blaming And I could realize that I actually was choosing to hold on to my pain. I was choosing to have those thorns, choosing to protect them at all costs. And those costs ended up being myself and my own sanity and my own happiness. Now, the other part of Buddhist practice, and I recently read a book by Thich Nhat Hanh called The Art of Living, And there was this really profound chapter where he talked about being able to let go and the value of really allowing yourself to feel those feelings. Part of what we're doing is we want to do anything but feel the feelings. It's so much easier to be angry or to be resentful or to be closed or to be numb or to shut down than it is to actually go in and just touch and taste these feelings that need to be part of what's happening in our experience so that we can move out of only being in the suffering and move into the freedom and the solution. When Thich Nhat Hanh talks about in this chapter, he talks about noticing the pain So that's going to the thorn, right? Instead of protecting the thorn, what we're doing is we're going to the thorn. We're actively interested in how to remove the thorn and feeling what the feeling is. Maybe it's grief. Maybe it's abandonment. Maybe it's isolation. Maybe it's shame. Maybe it's grievance, maybe it's guilt, going into whatever that is and allowing yourself to name it, to name that thorn, to have clarity of what that is. And instead of moving away from it, we're actually moving towards it with tenderness. And he offers a practice where you can breathe with it. And I would suggest putting your hand on your heart so that you are connected to yourself. And as you breathe in, he offers to say, hello, my pain. Hello, my dear pain. I'm here for you. And as you breathe out, you're offering that tenderness. You don't need to be afraid. It's okay to feel these feelings. It's okay to express these feelings. Breathing in again, hello, my pain. I feel you. I witness you. I see you. Hello, my pain. Thank you. Thank you for moving through me. Thank you for allowing me to feel. Thank you for showing me the way. Hello, my pain. I'm ready to release you. I don't need to hold on to this. It's given me what I need to know. Being present with it, allowing it, being in your heart, touching your heart, allowing yourself to feel so many of us were told as children don't cry. You don't feel like that. You're okay. Everything's okay. Don't be upset. We were taught that we couldn't trust our feelings. We were taught that we couldn't be trusted with our feelings. And so this is an opportunity for us to move into, be attentive to, witness what it is we might be feeling, be curious about it, ask it questions, ask why it's wanting to hold on. What is it trying to teach you? How is it protecting you? How does staying in pain keep you from whatever it's keeping you from? Is it working for you? 
Is this something that no longer serves you? Are you ready to be healed? Are you ready to let it go? Are you ready to move on to a new way of being? To a new way of connecting with yourself and others? Are you ready to be healed? And as I've gone in and I've removed the thorns, the old thorns, the childhood thorns, the thorns with my husband, the thorns with my old co-workers, the thorns with my friends. It's really powerful how underneath each one of those thorns is a similar belief structure that came from situations, experiences when I was a child with my family and with friends. And you've heard about so many of those in the podcast By looking at them and realizing what those foundational beliefs are, I can have such tenderness to myself. And I think self-compassion is one of the number one tenets of soul recovery. To be kind to yourself, to let go of that judgmental voice that is trying to tell you that you're not enough, that wants you to stay on this cautious, small road that isn't leading you to your fullest, truest self. It's interesting that we're brought here as spiritual beings, having this human experience, and yet choosing to live on a spiritual path and choosing to be from our fullest self and to let go of pain and to release grievance, to release resentments, takes effort. Many of us can't get there. Many of people in the world just cannot get there, but many of us can, and you're here because you're interested. You're here because this is important to you, because you want to remove the pain. You're ready to remove the thorns. And this is your first time listening to Recover Your Soul. Some of these concepts might be new. Maybe you typed in the search engine that you're looking for how to release pain. And we get to choose. Soul recovery is about choice. It's about self-awareness. It's about turning away from others and needing them to give to us what we need. That's the second tenet of the Four Noble Truths, that the grasping, the desire, the wanting something else to be different is the cause of our suffering. And we're moving into a place of that there is a spiritual path. And that spiritual path is whatever that is for you. Maybe it's God. Maybe it is the stars. Maybe it's spirit. Maybe it's source. Maybe it's energy. Maybe it's Jesus. Maybe it's your dog. Whatever that is, that knowing that there is something greater than ourselves that when we release that grasping, we can actually come out of that place of suffering where we are covered in thorns and we have protected ourselves and we have kept people away and we've kept love away and we have believed these inner critic thoughts that came when we were too little to understand why we choose to believe we're not enough. You are enough. Being willing to feel your feelings, being willing to recognize that your pain has value, that the suffering actually has value, but you don't have to live in the suffering. You don't have to be the suffering. You just need to let it flow through you. Stand in the strength of who you are. Let the storm be around you. Let it come and let it go dissipate. You are more than your pain. You are more than your pain. You are not defined by your pain. You can let it go. You can come to this centered place and you can believe that you are enough, that you are loved, that you are a whole. I know this. And as I say these words, I say them to you, each one of you. I feel you. I want you to believe. I want you to believe in yourself and to be willing to make a choice in soul recovery, 
to choose healing and release your pain. Until next time, namaste. Are you wondering, how do I go deeper on my soul recovery journey? Or how do I support this great podcast? Well, here's your call to action. If you're ready for real inner change and would like to work directly with me, visit the website and book a coaching session. I'm here to support you on your unique path. I'm here to help you let go of the past, to deepen your connection with higher power, whatever that is for you, and then to discover and step into a happy and healthy life of your making. You can also become part of the Soul Recovery community. One way is to join the support group. It's the first Monday of every month. It's on Zoom from 6 to 7 p.m. Mountain Time, and you can register on the website and get your Zoom link. It's the same link every month. We're also on social media. Of course, there's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and now even Insight Timer. Yes, lots of ways to connect. There is even a private Facebook group that will allow you for more communication and conversation about soul recovery with your community. If you'd like an extra bonus episode every Friday, you can become an Apple Podcast subscriber or choose your tier level of giving on Patreon. I'd also love all the listeners to subscribe on the website so that I can keep you informed on what's going on with the podcast, the community, with me, and anything that's up and coming and new and great about soul recovery. Also, if you just take a little bit of time and give me five stars, a quick review, share the podcast with friends and family, make sure you're subscribing however you listen to the podcast. We're helping even more people to have soul recovery in their lives. If this podcast is providing you spiritual nourishment and inspiration, thank you, thank you, thank you for going to the website, pushing the donate button, and giving whatever feels right to you. It means so much to me because I have this mission of sharing soul recovery with the world and your donations, your bookings, your subscriptions, everything that you do to be part of this community is making all that happen. Together, we can do the work that will recover your soul.